Biomaker CA is an artificial life project where we simulate biomes of plant-like organisms that have to survive, compete and reproduce. If you're new to the channel, consider checking out prior videos first. Today, I'll tell you about my most recent experiment. I was experimenting with adding lava and fire to the environment and I thought that it would be cool to have very wide environments with different habitats along the x-axis. So, I naturally thought that decreasing the height of the environment would save computation and allow me to increase the width by a lot. So, here is the persistence configuration with a much smaller height. Uh, what happened? Perhaps it was a bad combination of agent logic and mutator. Let's try them all. Ha! They all fail. Perhaps they're very unlucky. Let's run a promising model, the extended logic with a randomly adapted mutator, several times. This seems like a problem, but what is going on? The following is the story of how I got obsessed with this question and tried to figure out both what is the problem and how to create a biome that survives. Let's look again at our initial failure. Here we see that in 5000 steps all agents die, alongside destroying the soil. What can we do about it? Well, we can try to meta-evolve the initial DNA to create a biome that survives. Meta-evolution is some fancy word for saying we simulate hundreds and hundreds of runs, in this case each 5000 steps long, where we try out different initial DNAs, and this way evolve our initial DNA to maximize a fitness function. In this case, the fitness function wants us to maximize the number of agent cells in the environment, while making sure that they don't go extinct. We say meta in meta-evolution because during each simulation, plants evolve inside their environment. So, if we evolve plants from outside the simulation, we call it meta. Here is the result after 30 steps of meta-evolution. Because Biomaker CA is implemented in JAX, performing meta-evolution is trivial. Here, we focus on an extended model with an adaptive mutator, which is almost 27,000 parameters. Quite a lot. And it works! After 5,000 steps, the biome is still alive. Problem solved. That was fast. Oh, it dies right after. That's the problem with simulating only 5,000 steps. You never know what happens after that. One big culprit of problems with that simulation is that cells age and die within 10,000 steps, and they start dissipating energy after 5,000. So, let's meta-evolve with simulation of 10,000 steps and let's see if it helps. Again, I meta-evolved the DNA for 30 iterations and... Ha! It just dies out right before 10,000 steps. Also, did the plant reproduce at all? This is what I would call a fitness trap. Following the fitness function caused the organism to forget how to reproduce. So, let's try something different. Let's penalize an extinction event even more and let's run each simulation for 15,000 steps. This way, plants have to reproduce to get a good fitness. Okay, well, it reproduces a bit and lasts longer, but it ultimately still dies. Could it be that the problem is not much the height of the environment, but the width? Perhaps there is not enough space to try out mutations, but they may survive with more space? So, let's take this meta-evolved DNA and without any further training, let's try to put it into a much wider environment.
This is much more interesting, and the biome seems to survive for much longer. In this case, it lasted 30,000 steps. But still, see how some mutations just eroded all the earth? I think that this hints at us having a bad environment. If some random mutations can destroy the environment to such an extent, probably the environment is at fault too. Still, that's the environment that we have, and it is too early to give up. Perhaps we just need to change approach. There is one more thing that we can try, that I call Petri dish meta-evolution. It is still a meta-evolution approach, where we simulate many runs to meta-evolve our initial DNA, but this time we solely focus on a single plant. In a Petri environment, reproduction is disabled. Flowers can still trigger a reproduction event, and we record whether that would have worked, but we don't generate any new seed. So we are only studying an individual plant. What you're observing is an example run of an initial DNA on a Petri environment. Why would that be convenient at all? Well, we can be more precise with what kind of behavior we want our original plants to have. In this case, we will say that they need to be composed of approximately 50 cells at all times, and that they need to reproduce a lot. We can train that much faster, and we don't even need to simulate an entire plant's lifetime. In this case, the maximum lifetime of a plant is 10,000 steps, but we will simulate only for 2,000 steps. And here is how the metabol plant performs in a Petri environment. What a beautiful and unique behavior. Okay, but that is for 2,000 steps in a fake environment, where reproduction doesn't actually exist. What do we do with it? Well, let's just take this DNA and place it in a real environment, where reproduction does happen, and see what happens in 20,000 steps. First, let's see what would happen if reproduction would be with literally no mutation at all. Would it survive for so long? Yes, it does! That's progress! But now let's try to add mutation to the system. Let's start with our usual basic mutator. A shame. But we know what's going on now. The mutator is too aggressive. Let's try again with 10x smaller mutations. Success! It works! And the behavior is slightly different from the mutationless version, so evolution can happen in this environment. I think this is enough for today. For those who are interested, here is how it performs on a wider environment, for 50,000 steps, more than ever done before. Well, that was an adventure. And against all odds, we learned how to get some successful DNA in such a difficult environment, while also understanding more on what makes this environment so bad and to ideally avoid. As usual, you can run all of these experiments with a Google Colab linked in the description. You can also download the successful DNA and test it, or use it as a starting point for further experiments. I hope this format was of interest to you. This is a simplified version of how I perform research. You have a problem, and you try to understand what is going on and eventually solve it. In this case, we were lucky and we managed to succeed, but we shouldn't give it for granted. Perhaps in the future I will also show some failures and ask for help from the community. If you like what you see, like and subscribe, and if you would like to contribute, please reach out to me in whatever form works for you. Until next time!